Hi, I'm Donald Smith. I'm going to talk today about nurse theorist Rosano Loxon and his theory on technology and caring. As an exemplar, I'll be relating a story of my mom and how this theory could be applied to her care. Rosano Loxon was born in 1954 in the Philippines and is a professor emeritus at Florida Atlantic University. He earned his BSN in 1976, his MSN in 1978, his PhD in 1988. We're going to look at his theory of nursing, which he describes as desiring a practice that is congruent with the demands for technological competency and caring in nursing. In emergency nursing, there's a saying, treat the patient, not the monitor. I think that six-word phrase sums up Loxon's theory pretty succinctly. The idea is the technology is useful and it helps you know your patient better, but it doesn't replace engaging your patient directly. And of course, don't defibrillate the patient who is talking to you. Essentially, Loxon theorizes that nursing care is dependent on knowing the person fully and that patients are participants in their care rather than objects of our care. Technology can be helpful, and in this day and age, essential to nursing practice. As nurses, we need to use that technology to better know our patient, but not at the expense of losing sight of our patient as a person who is active and engaged in their care. The key to the whole theory isn't that people are tasked, but they should be engaged by the nurse, ask what they want or need, and to use technology so the nurse and person can be better informed of their care, options, and progress. Finally, we should take a minute and define the word technology. Technology can be a means to an end, an instrument, a tool, or human activity that increases or enhances efficiency. There are five assumptions Loxon lays out to frame his theory. First, Persons are caring by virtue of their humanness. Second, persons are whole or complete in the moment. Third, knowing persons is a process of nursing that allows for continuous appreciation of persons moment to moment. Fourth, technology is used to know wholeness of persons moment to moment. And fifth, nursing is a discipline and professional practice. The general idea here is, as humans, we are caring, and regardless of the technology, we must never lose that humanity. Although persons are complete, there's nothing a nurse needs to do to make the person whole again, because the person is ever-changing. To understand them, to know the person, technology should be used to assess them from moment to moment. As such, nurses need to remain up-to-date on changing technology and advancements. Earlier, I mentioned my mom and how Loxon's theory could be applied to her care. In 2004, she was diagnosed with cancer and underwent radiation. The effects of the treatment caused her to need a colostomy bag. Although her body had changed, the device, a colostomy bag, enabled her to carry on in life. She had changed, but with the colostomy bag was still whole. A wound care nurse would evaluate her periodically, and over the years, recommend newer technologies that would improve my mom's ability to care for herself. If the nurse hadn't taken the time to stay up to date with changing technology and understood the needs of the person, my mom might have fumbled with antiquated equipment. We learn from Carper the various ways of knowing. Technology can aid nurses to better know their patients as devices can allow for more time interacting with the patient and family. Take an iStat machine versus drawing and running a blood gas. Bedside iStats enable the nurse to enter the world of the nurse, draw labs, run the tests, provide the person with the information in much less time and without ever leaving the bedside than running a traditional blood gas. This enables the nurse to efficiently interact more closely and know the patient. The essential frames of Loxon's theory include knowing, the act of using technology to better understand the patient in a particular context, designing, 
Once there's knowing, the nurse and patient can work together collaboratively to plan the patient's care around the patient's goals. Participative engaging. After designing a plan of care, that plan is implemented and evaluated for success. Furthering knowing. This is a continuous process of knowing, designing, and participative engagement. The process is always in motion and through the use of technology, the person is better known and the plan of care continually reevaluated as the person changes. This again applies to my mom. The wound care nurse realized my mom had developed a hernia and the colostomy needed to be moved as a result. The nurse knew my mom and with my mom's input developed a plan of care. The plan was implemented and reevaluated, furthering the nurse's knowing of my mom. The strengths of the theory are that it drives nursing to embrace new technology, as long as it improves our ability to know our patient. As is noted in the 2015 paper, Advancing the Theory of Technological Competency as Caring and Nursing, the Universal Technological Domain, Loxon notes that nurses are celebrated as, quote, technological connoisseurs, enabling them to more fully know their patients and realize their value in skilled nursing practice. There are instances where technology pushes us further away from knowing our patient. For instance, the new Apple Watch. Although there are stories that has helped diagnose atrial fibrillation, it has also led people to be unnecessarily concerned. As a caring nurse, if a patient came looking for help because of what a piece of equipment said, the first question really should be, how do you feel? How are you as a person? Further investigation could be performed using technology to better understand and know the person, but the goal isn't to fix something that might not need fixing. Obviously, a big weakness is in innovative technologies is that it may help the nurse to better know their patient clinically, but create distance resulting in loss of caring and a loss of humanity. The trap that needs to be avoided is that we don't create a sterile environment between the nurse and patient where the patient ceases to be a person engaged in their care, but simply another task to be checked off the list. Task fixation is a term used in the realm of human factors engineering, but it's applicable here. A danger with technology is the reality that, although we work to avoid treating the monitor, we can get caught up in something a piece of technology is telling us but not stopping to see if the patient actually needs our care. Ultimately we, ultimately, we must not lose the humanity of caring that makes us people and nurses. Loxon himself touches on this in his 2017 paper, The Coexistence of Technology and Caring in the Theory of Technological Competency as Caring and Nursing. As artificial intelligence becomes more widespread, the question needs to be asked if nursing will lose its humanity as nurses, as machines, excuse me, as machines do more and more. As crazy as the idea may sound, it isn't far-fetched. Robots are already being used in nursing homes and with the elderly to perform basic nursing tasks, and some are even functioning as companions. One solution he mentions involves ensuring nurses are engaged in the conversation at these t as these technologies develop. Nurses need to be good patient advocates to safeguard the technology, and not just treat the patient clinically, but ensure the humanity isn't lost in the process. In my world, we have so many pieces of equipment to help us know the patient. ECG machines, glucometers, non-invasive blood pressure machines, capnography, pulse oximetry, all incredibly useful devices. But in the end, it's the interaction between me and my patient that is most important. Although not exactly in my clinical practice, where I believed I witnessed the greatest use of Loxon's theory is in hospice care. After my mom was diagnosed with kidney failure and she had refused further treatment, she was admitted to hospice. The decision was made in the late morning while she was an inpatient at a local hospital. My sister and I scrambled to find a hospice care service as the physician planned to discharge her from the hospital that afternoon. The hospice admission nurse was at the bedside within an hour of us notifying them of the decision. She utilized an iPad to make notes and began the admission process, which was less intrusive 
than sitting on a desktop computer and more personal than over the phone, which allowed her to be present for us. We decided to have hospice in my mom's home in the same afternoon before my mom was discharged. A crew arrived to set up the hospital bed and equipment we'd need for her. An ambulance brought my mom home and got her settled in bed. These arrangements were made so efficiently by the nurse, my sister and I could just focus on our mom. That evening, another nurse arrived to complete the admission process. She taught us how to use the comfort kit, which included an assortment of medications, all prepackaged and with appropriate syringes. She too utilized an iPad, which helped reduce the amount of equipment she needed to carry. For years, my mom had worked as a home care nurse, and I remember she had a trunk full of equipment scale, vital sign measurement device, medical bag full of gear. The way these hospice nurses traveled was light and unobtrusive. Again, this enabled the nurse to function efficiently and truly get to know my mom. The whole experience was similar. Days later, when she did pass, a nurse arrived with a stethoscope and a smartphone. As a paramedic in a previous life, I pronounced my share of people. To do so required me to carry in an ECG machine, confirm death with a Sicily and three leads, listen for the absence of heart and lung sounds, check pupils. It was a necessary requirement, I guess, but not very personal, and try as I might, a bit cold. This nurse, on the other hand, came in with just a phone and a stethoscope. Before the nurse arrived, even though he hadn't dealt with us at all while my mom was in hospice, because of the information he was able to retrieve from his phone, he knew my, my name, my sister's name, and our mom's. He then listened to our mom's heart for a minute, told us what we already knew, and went into the other room to do what he needed. He was able to fill out the death certificate, contact the funeral home, notify the on-call physician all from his phone, while still free to answer our questions and remain caring and engaged, but allowing us the space to grieve. For one of our darkest moments, we felt cared for, and as a result, our mom was cared for too. Nursing, fundamentally, is a caring, evidence-based profession. Remove that humanity, and it's simply a procession of tasks. Technology is useful and should be embraced by the profession as long as it enhances our knowing of the person. In order to ensure caring is not displaced, Nurses need to remain current with advancing technologies and ensure they benefit the nurse-patient relationship and enhance knowing. Thank you.